If you're good, you're not making it in this video. You have to be great to make it in this video. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is my top, top, top high-end makeup from 2023. So all of these products I tried this year and they are the best of the best. There's nothing in this video that is not a top, top favorite for me. So this is not all the makeup that I've tried this year. I've tried a lot more than this. And I went through this list several times to make sure every single product on here was no questions asked. It had to be in this video. So these are the top, top favorites. If you're good, you're not making it in this video. You have to be great to make it in this video. So just know I've tried much more than this, but these are the very, very best. I'm excited to get into it. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty content here on YouTube. I hope you'll subscribe, stick around, and let's just get started. We've got a lot to go through. I will do a drugstore version of this video as well, but this video, we're just talking high-end makeup. Let's get into it. Before we move into the makeup, I did want to include an SPF category in here because SPF is something I wear every single day and I've tried quite a few this year, but only one is the absolute best in my opinion and it's this one. In fact, this one is empty. I used it all up today before or when I did my skincare. This is my favorite SPF by far, the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella SPF with SPF 50. This is fantastic. It is lightweight, it's not greasy, it doesn't have a really strong sunscreen smell. It works well over any makeup products that you put over the top. It's fantastic. If you have sensitive skin, the Sika, I'm not sure what it is, but I know it's Sika included in here is really good if you have sensitivity or you just you struggle finding an SPF that doesn't irritate your skin. I buy these in like threes when I order them. I have this is my first one from my last order, so I still have two ready to go that I will be opening up. But this is fantastic. The only SPF that I'm including in this video. So all of these products are things that I tried this year. Some of them were new launches from this year and some of them were not new products. They were just products that were purchased this year that I tried out. We're gonna go in the order that I typically apply makeup, starting with primer. The first one is technically this is, this could be a primer or this could be skincare. It's kind of a hybrid between the two and it's this product, the Merit Great Skin Serum. I've talked about this quite a bit on my channel this year, but this is such an amazing hydrating serum that just gives your skin the prettiest glow, but it's not oily. It's a serum and it looks oily in the bottle. So you can see there, it kind of separates. So you have to really shake it up well before you use it. But this, if you struggle with dryness on your skin and your makeup just doesn't lay well, on your face. This is the answer. This is the answer. I'm telling you this stuff is fantastic, especially if you're applying something like a cream foundation or a stick foundation. Sometimes those can be a little bit more stiff. This is the perfect prep product for those types of formulas. It also has a ton of skincare ingredients in it. There's no fragrance, which is amazing. I find a lot of the times products like this that may be really nice, but they are usually fragranced with some type of essential oil and it smells nice, but all of us don't want fragrance in our makeup product. This is also really great under your eyes before you apply a corrector or a concealer. Again, if you struggle with a lot of dryness, texture or crepiness, anything like that, you can take like the smallest amount of this and really tap it in under your eyes, let it sit, and then apply your concealer or whatever you're applying under your eyes, and it's a really great way to prep that area. I can't recommend this highly enough. I know a lot of you also use this, and it's amazing. This next one, I did kind of debate just a little bit 
about whether I would include it because this is a brand new product to me. Most everything in this video are things that you've seen me use a bunch of times, but there are a few things that I've tried recently and I they blew me away and they made it in this video and this is one of them. This product from Victoria Beckham. This is the Augustina Spader Cell Rejuvenating Primer, I believe is what it's called. But this is the golden shade. If you saw my Victoria Beckham video that went up a few videos ago, this is a primer, but really a moisturizer. It's pretty thick and it's in collaboration with Augustina Spotter, which I'm sure you've heard all about. It's been all over social media this year. It's a very high-end, expensive skincare brand, but this is the golden shade. So it comes in an original and golden. The golden gives you a little bit of a golden glow. And this is the first product I've ever tried, this type of product, that gives a little bit of warmth to your skin without being too much without making you look orange and unnatural. I did not apply this today, but if you want to see it in action, I will link the Victoria Beckham video. Go look at it. But I've worn it a few times since then, and this is fantastic. Not only as a primer, a really hydrating primer, but just with that little bit of golden glow. I think I even said in my Victoria Beckham video, I've just kind of been feeling a little bit pasty lately and I want just something with a little bit of warmth to it sometimes without being orange. And I've never been able to find that until this. I was kind of on the fence about trying this product, but I'm so happy that I did. And finally, the primer that I do have this one on today, the best smoothing pore filling primer by far that I've tried the Tarte Timeless Pore Smoothing Primer. I tried this out this year and I didn't really have super high hopes for it, but I've seen so many people that I love and watch all the time rave about this product. And this, this is the most smoothing primer I've ever tried, ever. And I've tried quite a few primers in the last few years. Nothing compares to this in terms of just smoothing your skin. I mainly use this here, here and here sometimes, but mainly right here on the sides of my nose, especially if I'm wearing a foundation that's more on the glowy side. I like to do that right here just, just so it's not too much glow in the area where I have more pores or more visible pores. This is fantastic. I have a little mini one and I don't use a ton of this when I use it, so the mini would last you forever. But all right, let's move on to foundations and skin tints. Now this is a category I've tried a lot from this year. In fact, when I was going through making my list, going through all my videos from the year, I was like, wow, you, sh you have tried a lot of foundations this year. And I really narrowed this down, really, really narrowed this down. Let's start with the one that I have on today. This is the other product that, believe it or not, you've not seen me use in a video. I tried it about a week ago when I filmed a different video, and you haven't seen it yet, I don't think. When this video goes up, you will see it in the next few days. But I tried this foundation that I got in PR months ago. I. It might have been close to a year ago I got this in PR and I just never got around to trying it until about a week ago I pulled it out and decided to try it out and this is what I have on my face today. This product from Yensa, the Skin on Skin BBCC Full Coverage Foundation with SPF 40. I tried this out and this literally blew me away as soon as I tried it. As soon as I started blending it in, I was like, wow, I was not expecting for this to be this pretty. This is the shade Light Neutral. First of all, it's a fantastic shade match for me. My natural fair skin tone with no sun or anything. The shade Light Neutral is truly a perfect match. But this is the most beautiful, slightly radiant, but not in like a greasy way, medium to full coverage. If you really add a lot of this, you could definitely get a full coverage. I usually only use, or I've been using about one pump, which gets you about a medium coverage, but oh my gosh, 
this blew me away. I was like, how have I had this all this time? I haven't tried it until now. This is what I wanted from the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. It wore beautifully. It is stunning. I had to include it. I had to include it in here. That is how much I loved it. The only thing, and I'm gonna mention this because I know this bothers a lot of you, it does have a little bit of a smell. That's the one thing I don't love about it. Okay, another foundation that I tried this year that I fell in love with is this one from Tom Ford. This is the Traceless Matte Stick Foundation. Sadly, I am pretty sure this is being discontinued. I know, I saw someone else was doing a video talking about this and either they said or someone in their comments said, that they reached out to Tom Ford to ask about this and why it's on sale everywhere and that they did confirm that it's being discontinued, which why on earth would they discontinue this? This is like their most popular foundation by far, I think. I mean, it just looks like your skin, but better. It's a natural finish, medium coverage. You're not gonna get a full, full coverage out of this, but you can build it up a little bit if you want to kind of spot conceal in any areas. But I fell in love with it. It wears beautifully. I think whether you have dry skin or oily skin or normal skin, I feel that this is a foundation that would work for most people. I can't say enough good things about it. If you can get your hands on it in your shade, I would highly recommend it. Next something else. This is definitely not a new product, but I tried it for the first time this year. In fact, I had to go back and double check. I did in fact buy this this year because I feel like I've been using this for a long time, but no, it was early this year. I discovered my love for this Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer. This is probably, of all the foundations that I own, this is probably the one that gets worn the most, and it is absolutely beautiful. I keep saying that, I know, but these products I really thought about before I put them in this video, and this has to be there. It is thin, incredibly lightweight, but still gives some coverage, and it's a soft matte finish. This wears beautifully. I wore this about a week and a half ago. I had a doctor's appointment early in the morning, I left my house very early in the morning and I was gone all day. I did some Christmas shopping and just a bunch of things before I came home. I was gone pretty much the whole day. I wore this for a full 12 hours. This lasted. It lasts on my skin, no touch-ups, nothing. It's impeccable. I'm also a little concerned about this because I was noticing in Sephora the last time I was there at the Estee Lauder section, this had been uh, replaced with the new one. The new one that's in a bottle with a dropper. It's a serum skin tint. I hope that doesn't mean that this is being discontinued and that is replacing it because if this gets discontinued, I am I am going to, I'm gonna call Estee Lauder somehow. I don't know. I will literally be devastated if they discontinue this. But if you're looking for a perfect everyday lightweight foundation, little bit of coverage, wears well, this is it. And finally, only one more, only one more, and this is also a skin tint. This is something I tried a little bit later in the year, but it is beautiful and it definitely deserves a spot in this video, and it's this. The CL Tint and Protect SPF 50. This is uh, the same type of product as the Estee Lauder, but this has SPF 50, which is amazing. And this is a little bit more on the glowy side. It's more of a serum-y texture. It gives about the same amount of coverage, I would say, as the Estee Lauder. It's just glowier, but it still wears well. They are opposites in terms of how they look on your skin, but they are both very long wearing, which is why they're making it in this video. If you're looking for something with SPF for every day, just something pretty lightweight, not a ton of coverage, but just enough, this is beautiful. This is a new brand to Sephora this year, and I can't wait to see what they come out with next. And that is actually it for foundation and skin tint. Now, if you're wondering why the Glossier Stretch Foundation is not in here, I do like that foundation. I still like it. Honestly, the Yensa knocked that one out of this video because the Glossier is pretty, but this is prettier. 
in my opinion. So if you're wondering, that's why the Glossier is not included in this category. For corrector, this is a very easy category because there was only one. There's only one corrector that made it that impressed me this year that I've tried and it's this one. The Huda Beauty Faux Filter Color Corrector in Pink Pomelo. This came out, this has been out for a while. This came out earlier in 2023. This is fantastic. The, the color range, there are five shades. The shades are really good. This one is such a perfect formula in my opinion. It's very thin and lightweight, but it is pigmented. So you need like one very small dot where your under eye is the darkest and it will spread. I, I just have been so impressed with this. It wears well, it wears beautifully under all of my concealers. That's key with correctors because sometimes certain correctors don't play well with every concealer, but this one does. The only thing I would say is I do wish they would make one shade lighter than this. This is the lightest shade in Pink Pomelo and it works on me because my under eyes are pretty dark. So this I can't wear by itself. I do have to put concealer on over it. But I do think if you have a really fair skin tone, this is probably going to be too deep for you. So I do wish they made one shade lighter. But in terms of the formula, it's very thin and hydrating. It's not dry at all. And it wears beautifully on me with whatever I pair it with. So moving on to concealer again. I've tried a lot of concealers this year. I love concealer. You know Natasha Denona. I feel like this is in everyone's best of 2023 video and that's for a reason. It it truly is as good as everyone is saying that it is. Not only is it beautiful under the eyes, it's beautiful just all over your face as foundation. I use mine that way a lot. I have two shades. I have R in three, which is what I have under my eyes today. And then I have N2, which I used to spot conceal on my face today. Literally nothing negative I can say about this. It is a very thin formula that has a lot of pigment. So you need very little product to get a lot of coverage. This really spreads. It goes far. So you, you really, you don't need a lot of this at all and it gives a ton of coverage, but it still wears well and it doesn't look cakey because it is that thin texture. Now, if you apply too much of this, I could see where you wouldn't love it because it's a lot of pigment. So if you've never tried it, just keep that in mind. Use less than you think you need, but it is beautiful. It's more of, I would say, a soft matte finish. And another thing about this that I like is actually I can get away with not setting this concealer. I don't think they claim that it's self-setting, but I do find that I don't have to powder this formula. It comes in 50 shades, so everybody can find a shade. It's great, I can't say, I can't recommend it highly enough. There is one more concealer though that really impressed me this year, and it's the House Labs Concealer. This is also really great. This is a very different formula though than the Natasha Denona. This one is a little bit on the thicker side. It's a little bit more hydrating too. I do think this gives a little bit less coverage as well. I would say Natasha Denona is more of a full coverage. This is more of a true medium coverage in my opinion. You can get away with using a little bit more of this than you can with the Natasha Denona, but it's also beautiful, it wears well. I, I think it's great. Now the shade range is not as good in this, I will say, as the Natasha Denona, but it is beautiful. I've had no issues pairing it with corrector underneath. It also looks beautiful on your face as foundation. So I have to say this one also really, really impressed me this year. Usually you can tell when I really like a concealer because I tend to buy two shades. I have two shades of both of these. So these are my concealer picks for 2023. Moving on to powders. I have two powders to share with you. The first one is this one from Jane Iredell. This is their Pure Pressed Mineral Foundation. 
So this is a powder foundation. I was honestly really surprised by this when I tried this. This was very early on this year. I've actually almost hit pan on this. You can see the rings in here. This is a refillable compact. So when you run out, you buy a refill for it. But this foundation is really nice and it doesn't look like powder on your skin, which that is kind of what you hear a lot about powder foundations is they kind of get a bad wrap because a lot of them do look heavy. They look like a lot of powder kind of sitting on your skin. This one doesn't. This one looks like your skin, just a more perfected version. The way I use this the most is when I use a lighter weight skin tint or a lighter coverage skin tint, I should say. I will use this to set my face and also add a little bit more coverage in areas where I need it. I also use this when I am just wearing concealer all over. So if I was wearing like the House Labs all over or the Natasha Denona all over, I'll use this to kind of set it in place and add some coverage at the same time. I have been so impressed with this. I'm so happy that I tried this out. The second powder is, I guess this is also technically a powder foundation, but the Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder. This is honestly kind of a similar product to the Jane Iredale. I kind of use it in a similar way. I use it with complexion products that are lighter in coverage or just lighter weight in general. I will use this to just set everything in place and it also adds a little bit of coverage as well. This is actually the one I used today. I didn't use a ton of it. I mainly used it right here in my t-zone and a little bit underneath my blush and bronzer but this is a very a very blurring powder which I really enjoy but it doesn't take away all the glow from your skin which I love that in a powder. Sometimes I want to set my face. I want to mattify a little bit, but I don't want to totally take any life and moisture out of my skin. That's what I like about this. All right, moving on to bronzer. The first one is has to be the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick. I tried this earlier this year in the shade Biscuit and this was kind of an instant love pretty much from the first first time I tried it. I have the little mini size, but Biscuit is such a gorgeous shade. I've kind of talked about this before, but I love this because it is a cooler toned shade, but I would say it's neutral to cool toned. It's not so cool that it's gray. So this gives me the kind of contoured effect, like if I'm wanting to kind of sculpt my cheekbones a little bit more, which is not something I do on an everyday basis, but today I did use this. Because it has a bit of a cooler undertone, you still get that contoured effect without it being too much. You have a little bit of warmth in here, which is why I think it leans a little bit more neutral. It's a beautiful shade if you have fair, light, light medium skin, I would say this shade would work for you. There is a medium shade and I believe they added a deeper shade as well. The formula is impeccable. It is easy to apply. My favorite way to use it is to get it on the back of my hand, use typically the BK Beauty 109 brush and I will work it into the brush, tap it on and that's it. It's not difficult to apply. It's not difficult to blend at all. It's a very effortless product and I'm always happy with how it looks and how it wears on my skin. Then I have two powder bronzers. One of them is another new product, but this one is not. This one, I, I had to put this in here, the Victoria Beckham Powder Bronzer Duo. I use the shade number two. I bought this earlier this year. I did a bit, I've done two Victoria Beckham videos. This is uh, something I purchased earlier in my first order. This is a beautiful bronzer. Not only is the packaging incredibly luxe and beautiful, heavy, just pretty to look at, the product is too. This is a very, I would say a very smooth, finely milled, almost blurring bronzer 
This it is stunning, and I love that you get two shades in here. That's something I really appreciate about this. You get a little bit of a lighter, little bit on the cool side shade, and then you get a warmer shade here. I usually just kind of mix the two together. I've just been so impressed with it this year. I had to include it. I did apply a little bit of this today over the Westman Atelier Face Trace, and it's beautiful. And the third bronzer. I'm really excited to share this one because this I actually have not had for very long. I got this in PR and I tried this in a video you have not seen yet when this goes up, but you just got to trust me. This bronzer may be the powder bronzer that I've been looking for. I love the Victoria Beckham, but this one, this one had to be in this video, you guys. The Sigma bronzer. This is their matte bronzer in the shade light. This is absolutely beautiful. Easy to apply, it's not patchy. I've even applied this without setting my foundation first and have not had any issues using it that way. Sometimes bronzers can be kind of finicky if the area underneath has not been really set down with powder. Not with this one. This is also a really beautiful color, it's warm but it's not too warm for my skin tone. That's something I struggle with sometimes in terms of bronzer. This is really good. This is really, really good. And I am so happy that I tried it. I had not tried any Sigma powder products before, but this is, this is a beautiful one. I feel like not many people talk about this either and it's good, so don't sleep on this. These are very, very, very good from Sigma. I have one highlighter to mention. Highlighter is not something that I use all the time, and I have quite a few of them, but it's just not a step of my makeup that I always include. But there is one product that I tried earlier this year that is definitely the favorite if I had to pick one the Westman Atelier Fully Loaded, Super Loaded Tinted Highlight in Peau de Peche. A lot of you told me that I needed this product before I, before I bought it. So this was influenced by a lot of you and this is an absolutely beautiful highlighter. But on my skin tone, this actually works for me as a blush and a bronzer. If I'm wanting to put on one product especially in the summertime. I can put this on. It gives me a little bit of bronze, but not too bronzy so that it also kind of works as a blush and it's a highlighter. It's a cream, so you obviously get the glow from a highlight. This product is absolutely beautiful. I do have it on today. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it over everything else. But this glow that you're seeing is coming from this. Yes, these are very expensive, but I will say I, I haven't regretted this purchase at all since I bought it. I mean, the packaging, if you've never felt the Westman Atelier packaging, especially these, these highlighters, I mean, it's heavy enough to be a paperweight. It's just so nice. It does come in the little Westman Atelier bag, but above all else, it is the most gorgeous natural looking highlighter that just looks like your skin is lit from within. All right, moving on to one of my favorites, if not my favorite category, which is blush. This was the most challenging category for me because number one, I've tried a lot of blushes and number two, I love blush. So it is very hard for me to say that things are better than other things because I just I just love blush. So we have quite a few in this category, but just know that these are these are top top favorites. Okay. We'll start with the one that I have on today. Again from Westman Atelier, the baby, I think they're called the Baby Cheeks Lip and Cheek blushes. I have 3. The my favorite is the one that I use today in Petal. I actually have this on my cheeks and on my lips. So this pink that you're seeing, most of the pink, I do have something else on top, but most of it is coming from this in Petal. What can I say about this other than it's just the perfect color. It's a perfect rosy nude that I love. It is pigmented, but not too much. It's easy to use. The packaging, again, I have to say about the Westman Atelier packaging, very similar to Victoria Beckham, but 
you have this magnetic cap. It's heavy. These products from Westman and Victoria Beckham, it's an experience to use these things. So yes, they're expensive. Yes, you are kind of paying for the branding and the packaging, but if you're a makeup lover, I know you understand. Sometimes that means a lot, even though it's, yes, it's kind of a trivial thing. It doesn't really matter what the product looks like itself. It's nice to have a nice, pretty product that just feels special. You know what I mean? And this is one of those products. I love it. Another cream blush that I tried this year and is had to make it in this video are the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Blush Veils. These are, in my opinion, a perfect everyday blush when you want that really natural kind of lit from within glow like your cheeks are just naturally this color that's this product they are very thin balmy they are the same formula as the skin enhancer from makeup by mario which i love i have four of them this one's probably well i was gonna say this one's my favorite but i really like all of them this one is perfect pink but what i love most about these is this is the most effortless cream blush that I own because you can take whatever brush. You can honestly probably use your fingers with this and you could make it work because they are so creamy and blendable that you really can't mess them up. And I would say the same thing about the Skin Enhancer from Mario. If you have super oily skin, I would say you do need to set these with a little bit of a powder blush because they are thinner, they're more hydrating. So if you have really oily skin, I can see where maybe they wouldn't last as long on you. So I would recommend setting them with a powder. But I reach for these all the time and I love them. That's why I have four of them. So clearly they are favorites. Another favorite for me this year Kind of surprised me to be honest and it's the Dior Rosy Glow Blush in Rosewood. I held off on buying this for a while. I just, I was, I don't know why when these were reformulated, they re-released them in the new shades. I don't know why, but I just, I thought in my head, okay, I don't need those. That's not something that I feel like I need in my collection. But then I kept seeing this particular shade everywhere. This is truly the exact tone of, of lip product and really blush that I love. It's a true rosy nude. Rosewood is a perfect name for it. This is what I actually have on over the petal from Westman Atelier today. I used a little bit of this over the top and these are deceiving because they do not swatch well. Don't go by the swatches because the swatches make them look terrible. Something about applying them on your skin. I guess it warms them up a little bit and they just meld and blend right in to your skin. They're beautiful. I don't have any of the other new colors, but I love this one. And then the blush that probably surprised me the most this year, I was, I was kind of torn on whether or not I was going to purchase this or not, but I'm very happy that I did. The Patrick Tosh She's Wanted blush. Now we all know if you're not new to my channel, this is my favorite blush formula. I love the Patrick Tosh blushes. I have almost all of them. I kept seeing him use this on his social media and I just loved the tone of this blush. It's a berry, like a blue based berry color and I didn't have anything else like this in my collection. This is such a unique color. It is absolutely stunning and you can in fact pull this off if you have a lighter skin tone. You just have to be a little bit more light handed with it. So this is very pigmented. So if you have a lighter, more fair skin tone, just know that going in. Make sure to kind of tap it off maybe on the back of your hand before you go on your face with it because it does have a lot of pigment. But the tone and the undertone of this color is so unique and so beautiful. I'm so happy that I picked it up. I highly recommend it really for anyone of any skin tone. I think it's absolutely stunning. The final blush is a newer one to me. Again, from Victoria Beckham. Victoria Beckham has blown me away this year, to be honest, especially the things that I tried most recently. If you saw my Victoria Beckham video, several of those things in there really 
just won me over right right away and this was one of them the cheeky posh blush in the shade fame this is a very similar color to patrick tosh she's wanted but this formula is just less pigmented so if you are interested in a color like the patrick tosh she's wanted but you're a little scared of the pigment, this is a very, very similar color in the shade Fame. It's a little bit more sheer and kind of a balmier kind of blush formula, but it's so pretty. I absolutely loved it. As soon as I tried it, you can probably see in the Victoria Beckham video. Also really pretty on my lips as like a lipstick. So this absolutely beautiful. I will be buying more shades because I loved the formula. So this, I had to include it. I know it's a new product, but I loved it and I haven't stopped thinking about it since I used it. So I had to include it in this video. Moving on to brows. I This will be pretty quick because I only have two things. These are both very popular OG products, but I just discovered them this year. I'm sure you know what they are if you watch my videos, but the brow product that I cannot shut up about, that I cannot stop using, is the Anastasia Brow Powder in the shade Medium Brown. I bought this randomly earlier this year because I had fallen in love with the Rare Beauty Brow Duo, the Brow Shape and Fill Duo. I tried that early on this year. I loved it. As I continued using it and loving it, I started thinking, maybe I should try another type of powder product for my brows. So I decided to try this because this is just a product I've seen people using for years and I honestly have not used anything else since. I have, I've been using this, I think I picked it up during the Sephora sale. So it's been about two months now, two and a half months. This is the only brow product I'm using. I can't stop. It's it's just a brow powder. It's eyeshadow basically for your brows, but something about the look of powder in my brows, I just love. And I think it's because it looks the most natural to me. I have yet to use this and not love how my eyebrows turn out every single time. I do it quickly. I use mainly the darker shade everywhere except the inner corner. And then I'll take a little bit of the lighter shade and use that there but this is it for me. I'm not sure there will ever be another brow product unless something comes along, but I kind of I kind of doubt that this is not going to be my brow product of choice from now on. And I also fell in love with a brow gel that again, I've been hearing for years is a favorite for a lot of people that I watch. This is my favorite brow gel now. The Benefit Brow Setter. This sets your brows in place without making them feel crunchy or hard, but they still stay in place all day. They don't move. My brows look exactly the same at the end of the day as they do when I apply this product. I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm out. I'm almost out of this now. I just have a mini and I will be buying another one of these. All right, let's move on to eyeshadow. There have been some fantastic eyeshadow palettes this year. Really, really good ones. I feel like more so than previous years since I've been on YouTube, I have found the most eyeshadow this year that I fell in love with. We'll start with what I have on my eyes today. The palette that I'm sure you're seeing in every single video, but kind of like I said with the Natasha Denona concealer, this also deserves to be in every video, in my opinion. This is an effortless palette. It doesn't matter what look I do, what shadow I use in here, it turns out well every single time. I don't have to think when I use this palette, it doesn't matter. It truly doesn't matter what shadow I use. Every shade in here applies beautifully and they all look good together. This is a palette that just, I don't know, I don't even know the right words to use other than it's impeccable, the quality, the formula, the color story, everything about it is beautiful. Today I have on this kind of grayish taupe called Mesh. I have that in my crease. I have Mia, one of the wet, wet effect shades, I think is what they're called. That's what I have on my lid that's really sparkly. 
And then I took a little bit of Vague, which is this rose, and I added just a little bit of that in the outer corner, not very much at all. That's all I have on my eyes. And I did my eyes today in about five minutes because anytime I use this, like I said, it really does not matter what shade I use. Even if you just use one shade, there's one shade in here that is beautiful on its own. A lot of them are, but especially this shade up here, Travertine. It's a grayish, kind of like a gunmetal color. Beautiful. On its own, you don't need anything else. You can just put that on, maybe a little bronzer in the crease, and that's it. It is just, it's a standout palette in my top three in my collection. Also this year, the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3. I have to put this in here. You know how I feel about Patrick Ta. The person and the brand. I love him. I love his brand. I love his products. This palette is his all matte palette and... When this came out, a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people, a lot of things that I saw about it were, that's boring. That's so boring. Like, why didn't he do something more exciting? This is not boring. This is not boring. This is by far, in my opinion, the best matte eyeshadow palette. Yes, I mean better than the Makeup by Mario Master Matte's palette. Yes, I said it. I know a lot of people love that palette. If you've seen my eyeshadow palette declutter, you know, you know what I mean. Oh, it's so good, you guys. I'm so passionate about this because the formula, impeccable. These shadows blend themselves. They blend themselves. There is little to no effort involved in applying these shadows. The creams are beautiful. I love to use these, particularly the brown for liner. So good. They last all day. You can also use them as a base for eyeshadow. But probably my favorite thing about this palette is that you get half cool shades, half warm shades. I don't think that is common in eyeshadow palettes. I feel most palettes that are released now are either warm or they are cool. You very rarely get a palette that has an equal number of warm and cool shades. This palette has it. This palette has it. I don't care who says this is boring. This is not boring. I don't need another all matte eyeshadow palette. I don't because this one is perfect. All right. Also, something I fell in love with this year. I now own three of these. These little YSL quads. The first one is, or the first one that I purchased is this one. This is number 300, Caspa Spices, I believe is the shade name of this. Again, this is, this little palette is an experience. This, I mean, look at this. It's so stinking cute. How pretty with the leather here, the YSL. I mean, this is just, this just makes me happy to look at. But it's also a great palette. The Four shades in here, beautiful. These three right here, the mattes are, I don't really know how to describe them, but they're like a cream that turns to a powder. I don't think that's how they describe this formula, but it's so just creamy and buttery. Like it just melts on your eyes. It's It doesn't look like a powder, even though it is. And then this topper, so pretty. I love that, I mean, again, this is an effortless palette. Eyeshadow formulas are just getting better and better. It's pretty incredible. I started with this one, then I got Stora Dolls, which I have sitting right here. This is the, I think this is probably the most popular one. It's the one that's more uh, cool toned. Love it. And then I recently got the Babylon Roses quad as well, which is more pink and purple. I fell clearly very much in love with this formula from YSL. Last palette is the Dior, oops, I keep dropping my little applicators. The Dior, I think these are called Quints. Dior 5 Color Quint in the shade Nude Dress. I bought this early, it was very early this year, before Dior had reformulated. So this is not the new formula, but again, a, a perfect neutral palette. Yes, all these palettes I'm sharing are neutral, but neutral is what I wear, it's what I like, it what, it's what makes me feel 
my best. So that's why I'm sharing neutrals because that's what I love. That's what I wear. This shade here, this bronzy kind of rose gold color, again, a perfect one and done shade. You can put this all over and nothing else and it's beautiful. Beautiful on its own, but the other colors in here are beautiful as well. This brown in here I really like because it's a, it's a deeper brown, but it's not a chocolate brown. Almost like a milk chocolate brown. It's a little bit warmer. I would say these are more of a satiny feeling formula. This one here, the shade is more metallic, obviously, but these other shades, like particularly this brown, it's matte, but it has just the slightest bit of sheen to it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I don't know about the new formula. A lot of people have been asking me about that. I don't know because I haven't tried the new formula of these. So if you have, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are. I have one eyeliner that I have to share. I feel like I'm the last one to try these out. And I'm here to tell you that the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal Liners are worth it. I know a lot of people, I've been hearing a lot of people at least, rave about these liners. I know Martina loves these, Martina Lily. She was telling me forever how much she loved them and that I needed to try these. Finally, I got my hands on them during the Cyber Monday sale and yes, they are worth it. They are worth it, you guys. The formula on this, so creamy, incredibly easy to use, but they stay, they, they stay on your eyes. I use these in my Victoria Beckham video, obviously, and I use them the same way that I use them today. I use the shade Cinnamon for liner. So this liner you see on my top lash line is the shade Cinnamon, which is kind of a bronzy light brown. And then I use Cocoa, which is the darker brown in my waterline. And yes, they do stay put in the waterline. Now I want all of them, so now I'm in trouble because now I want more. Now I want more. I know they make an olive green shade and a bunch of other shades too. So I will be adding to my Satin Kajal collection in 2024. I have two mascaras to share with you. The first one you've heard me talk about a ton of times at this point. I fell in love with YSL Lash Clash this year in the shade brown. If you want your lashes to stand out, you want a lot of thickness and a lot of volume, this is the mascara for you. It's not an everyday mascara for me personally. So if you're looking for something natural, this is not it. This is a very dramatic, I want my lashes to be front and center kind of mascara. But if that's what you're looking for, I love it. I absolutely love it. I have, I bought a backup during the Sephora sale. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It is a little bit difficult to remove. That's the one thing I will say. I do have to work a little bit to get this off. I think it's just because of the nature of the formula, it adds bulk to your lashes. It adds a lot of thickness. So I just, I think it's a thicker formula. It really adheres to your lashes. So for that reason, I do find it's a long lasting as well. It does not smudge on me, but it is a little hard to remove. However, the mascara of the year, if I had to only pick one, this is the best mascara of this year. I'm telling you, this is the best. This one from Clinique that nobody is talking about. Why is no one talking about this? This is the mascara I have on today. I tried this not long ago, like a month or so ago. I bought this randomly one day when I was in Sephora. I was curious. I'd seen one or two things about it, but not many people talking about this. But I saw the reviews. If you read the reviews, they're good. This is a fantastic mascara. I absolutely love this. This is more for length, separation, and all, honestly a little bit of volume. I find that this kind of gives you everything. Gives you length, gives you volume, it separates, it does not smudge on me. This needs to win some kind of award. It is fantastic. I also love the brush on this. The brush is, it's pointy on the end, so you can see it's much skinnier at the end, and then it gets a little bit larger towards the base. 
but because the end is so tiny, you can really get in the inner corner. You can get those really fine lashes that are kind of hard to get to sometimes in the inner corner of your eye. This is so good. And I will tell you something else about this. This, you can literally do one swipe and this looks good. This is not even a mascara that requires a lot of building. This is the best mascara of the year. I'm just gonna say it, it's the best. And finally, we are on to lip products. I love lip products as well. I love lip liners in particular, but I really tried to narrow this down. The first one is this one from Sephora Collection. This is the lip liner I have on today. This is the Rouge Gel Lip Liner in the shade Sink or Suede. If your lips are similar to mine, my lips are naturally kind of a rosy, mauve -y tone. This is literally that tone, but a little bit darker and a little bit more cool toned. So for that reason, it's the perfect contouring color. It's the perfect color to overline your lips with. If you're around my skin tone and you have a lip tone that's similar to that, Sink or Suede from Sephora Collection is perfect. That's the lip liner I have on today, but they have a ton of colors in these lip liners, so it doesn't have to be this shade. I just happen to really like this one. But these, this formula from Sephora is so good, and it is very long wearing. Very, very long wearing. I can wear this all day long. At the end of the day, my lip color has usually kind of faded off, but the lip liner is still there. These are extremely long wearing and they're pretty affordable for a Sephora brand or a Sephora lip liner. I love them, highly recommend if you have a shade or you can find a shade that you like. These are great. And this one, I have to include this. I wasn't gonna include it, but I have to. The Dior lip liner in the shade Brown Fig. Also kind of a mauve rosy color, similar to my lips, but it's just a little bit darker. So this is shade Brown Fig. Very unique color. It's a brown, it's a rosy brown. That's how I would describe it. And because it's a bit darker, it really adds a lot of contrast. So I like to pair this with a little bit of a lighter lip color. The two together, oh, so good. And again, these are also very long lasting. Kind of a similar formula to the Sephora Collection liners, in my opinion. In terms of lip products, Again, I've tried quite a few this year, but these had to make it in here. The YSL Candy Glaze, so good. Again, the packaging. The packaging, I talk about this all the time, but these are beautiful. They're beautiful lipsticks. They're heavy, just nice feeling in your hand. But I have two of them. I have shade 15, which is more of a nude, a warmer nude. But today, I just have on the shade 02, which is a light pink. Looks like this. And I have this on over the Westman Atelier blush in Petal. And it adds the most shine and hydration to your lips. This is probably the glossiest lip balm type product that I've ever tried. So if you love that glossy, almost wet look on your lips, these are fantastic. And finally, this. The Clay de Peau Radiant Liquid Lip. I am not a liquid lip person. But when I tried these, or this, I only have one, this shade in 201, this is a very opaque pigmented liquid lipstick that's hydrating. It feels like a gloss and a balm on your lips, but you get way more pigment. So it is truly a liquid lip, but it's an extremely comfortable hydrating version of one which is very much up my alley because I am not, I'm not a fan of dry lip products. I do not like my lips to have that dry kind of cracked feeling, but this, these are good. They're very expensive, but this is a formula that I will get behind and I would love to have another shade at some point. If you are wanting something really pigmented, but you don't like that dry crusty feel that you can get from liquid lips sometimes, these from Clay de Peau are beautiful. All right, you guys, that is everything. Those are my top, top high-end makeup favorites from 2023. These products are the best, the very, very best. I did not have to think 
about including these things in this video. So if you're good, you didn't make it in this video. You have to be great to make it in this video. So I hope you enjoyed. I will have all the products listed and linked below for you. I do use affiliate links that support my channel. So thank you so much if you do choose to shop through them. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and follow me over on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. Make sure to leave in the comments what your top products are from the year. I would love to hear from you. I always get great recommendations from all of you in the comments. And that's it for today. I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye. Thank you.